Texas Governor uh, Greg Abbott has a uh, an interesting um, perspective on what's happening with this uh, Thanksgiving. And uh, here he is with Steve Ducey on Fox and Friends. Uh, governor, before you go, uh, the governor of Oregon, uh, a woman by the name of Kate Brown, says, hey, if you see anybody breaking any of our state suggestions and guidelines, call the cops. Is that the way uh, they should handle that? Call the cops if you see somebody walking around with no mask? I, I got to tell you, I think they may have some Fourth Amendment based challenges there, but also I have to point out the irony. If I understand correctly, uh, Oregon just legalized heroin and maybe cocaine. Yes. And so it's okay to have heroin and cocaine, but not turkey for Thanksgiving. That is un American. <laughs> it just does not make sense. Now, this is an outrage. The idea that uh, Turkey would be outlawed is just absurd. Is that complete the, is trampling it? on our civil liberties to eat a turkey? Um, you can, of course, eat turkey in Oregon. You just, uh, they don't want huge gatherings because there's this pandemic that's happening. Incidentally, it's happening in Texas. Apparently, he's not aware of that. But I remember, I'll remind you that his lieutenant governor was just like, well, we we're just going to have to like throw the old people in as chum. And uh, that will tire out the uh, COVID. And then when uh, all the old people have been eaten up by, uh, by the coronavirus, we can- Or by people because they can't eat turkey, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. That's Cannibalism obviously is being encouraged in Oregon. Yeah. And yeah. I like how they're now pro-snitching. They're pro-snitching on, uh, 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 for, or no, they're against no, they're, snitching. Sorry, I shouldn't, I should say that, yeah, right? It's like anti-cop. Anti-cop, yeah, exactly. Now they don't think you should call the cops on Right, people. exactly. No, you should only do that if you see a group of two or more black people having fun. Yeah, <laughs> cops, I thought cops make every situation better. So why, I mean, it's doing people a favor to call them the cops. Well, maybe on. we can get to some sort of compromise here in the middle between the red states and the blue states. We can, you know, reallocate funds for the police to have, you know, social program or social you know people go in and uh get rid of the turkeys yeah i mean Defund police the should not police. be the people there should be an entire crew uh paid by the federal government there should be a hundred thousand at least workers right now whose job it is to contact trace and test like like they have in other countries <laughs> There should be a whole like agency that have should basically have been created over the past uh, four or five months, six months, seven months. That is basically tracking people who might have COVID uh, and providing notice as opposed to the cops. You could actually probably um, take part of the police budget and dedicate it towards a local uh, contingency of people who are helping people not get coronavirus and die. Uh, that would be a good idea. Uh, but how much how much do you think that 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 was set up? Like, I mean, they clearly were like like they were in the pre-interview. They were like, listen, the governor's got a great thing to say about Oregon. Can you uh, maybe ask a question about it? Well, it's now this whole complete farce of the war on Thanksgiving, right, where they're taking the culture war to a whole nother level because, yeah, they had to uh, elaborate on the war on Christmas. And now Democrats, their culture, those liberals, the party of heroin and crack cocaine not powder cocaine that's ours uh heroin and crack cocaine over turkey the thing you love to eat most well you know? ben don gino on the im has a good point he says i see the medicinal benefits but i just think making turkey legal for recreational use it's just asking for abuse no i mean have you ever looked into the cold dead eyes of someone in a turkey coma it's dark what are you serious did ted cruz really really yes yes <laughs> he did the alamo for thanksgiving ah, come and take the you can pry this turkey from my cold dead hands yeah it's like the the image of the don't do drugs of the girl melting into the couch you know that that's a turkey coma right i mean to be it's fair it could, this could be the last stand for a lot of people who go to big thanksgiving gatherings and uh you know end up dying <laughs> as a result of it don't do turkey, not even once. I wonder, honestly, like, I, you know, the thing is, is that it, it, it is the lag time, the, the physical distance, you know, but we're going to have tens of thousands of people die because of Thanksgiving, specifically because of Thanksgiving this year. And um, more than likely. And you wonder, I mean, that's not, 
necessarily enough, but I wonder if this like, you know, how much, cause I've been thinking a lot about like, you know, what, I, mean, I guess I've been talking to, to Saul this weekend. I was like, you know, you know, our grand, you know, grandma, he didn't know her, but my grandmother, I realized my grandmother, obviously it was probably true of most people uh, or many people, my grandmother, my, uh, the, the, the uh, my great uncle who my son is named after, they all lived through the pandemic of 1918 and they never, ever brought it up. I mean, I, you know, I, I wasn't, I didn't specifically ask about it, but they never brought it up. I mean, the whole society uh, didn't talk about it. And after talking to uh, Mark Allen Derry the other day, the epidemiologist, when we were talking about that notion of like, you know, why is it six months? Why? Because he had come on in April and he said, it's six months peak to peak. And, or essentially, or, you know, uh, or, or, you know, where it, goes through a valley and then it begins to go back up. And it more or less was that. And epidemiologists have no real explanation for it, at least from a, you know, sort of a, a biological perspective. And he suggests, he said, you know, complete speculation, but I think it's just fatigue. I think it's just pandemic fatigue. And so it ends up being like a sociological reason as to why it comes back. It's because people let their guard down and, you know, uh, one wonders, like, what is going to be, are we as a society, because the 1918 pandemic, nobody talked about. It was basically erased from our history. And, um, you know, are we going to have the same attitude? Like, you know, at the beginning of this thing, everybody was like, there's going to be so much pandemic art and stories and movies. And they're like, I think one is going to come out with people with masks, you know, uh, two years from now. And people are just going to be like, no, thank you have well, no desire isn't there a movie coming out right now by the director of transformers that has to do with uh the pandemic maybe but Am i, I think people are just going to be like no effing way i don't know yeah. don't want to see any of this i am I'm so just like nauseated by it and then the question is like will if thanksgiving and we won't know and this is the sort of the danger too we won't know until like just after probably the beginning of january how many deaths come from Thanksgiving, right? Because there's, there's a... Yeah, and then Christmas. And then Christmas is going to add to it. You wonder if these holidays are not going to be in any way, the way that we have a public consciousness about it are going to be wrapped up in what could be just a horrible, horrible, um, you know, mass illness and death event. I mean, it's... Uh, Talk about Black uh, Friday. Yeah, exactly, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and we can't just blame it on people's consciousness as individuals, right? This is the result of policy decisions on a governmental level that could be decided differently. Well, I mean, Thanksgiving in and of itself, I mean, I think that we should obviously, you know, restaurants should be closed. Like, for instance, New York, the idea that you would close schools before you totally close restaurants is absurd. And it's being done for one reason only. And that is because people can't aff uh, afford to not go in and work at these restaurants and the restaurants can't. And because there is no, you know, the cities can't afford to pay for it. They need we need federal support for this. And, you know, we've been pretty explicit about this in terms of like Thanksgiving. You know, I don't know what kind of federal support there would be that would keep people from going to Thanksgiving with their families, right? I mean, like, uh, I, mean I, I would say, I would just say quickly that if Trump took this seriously, the Republican Party and his voters would too, and we'd be in a much better situation. Than this. Without yes. a doubt, yeah. without yeah. a doubt. I mean, that is, but I don't, I mean, is that like, is that, is that, is that policy per se, or just like, you know, Trump's politics? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, leadership, I guess, is, uh, I mean, it's not policy, but I think you can draw a line back to that, obviously. I mean, again, like it's all when you made it a cultural thing, which was the direct result of inaction, which is policy, then th there you go. I mean, all the dominoes are set to fall. And, right. and they do have policies in other countries that keep people from traveling around during these periods of uh, explosion in COVID cases, not just in China, not just in authoritarian China. But um, yeah, well, you could shut it down. You could I mean, you could say no planes are running. And, you know, the thing is, is that 
we gave the airlines a bailout already. They are, you know, I have no problem doing another bailout, but how about we get to, we're going to invest in your company. I mean, if you're, if you're a distressed company, we're coming in as like some type of, uh, you know, hedge fund or something, or, and we're going to come invest. I got no problem with that, but I want the returns too. Like, you know, you, the, you know, the story with the, with the airlines, of course, is they had tons of cash. And uh, they decided to basically put it into their board of directors, put it into their shareholders, put it into their CEO's pockets because they didn't need it. Oh, we're never going to, you know, we're never going to have a problem again. And then so much for their rainy day fund. So if if we're going to come in and rescue these um, companies that have been mismanaged, I got no problem with that, but I want a piece of it. I want a piece of the upside. I want my money to go in. I want to, I want a chunk of equity. Got to cut some of that waste out of the C-suite too. Exactly. I read a story out of China. Got to make hard decisions. I had not confirmed this, uh, but I heard a story that the government walled a family into their apartment because they had COVID to keep them from leaving, but they still gave them supplies. (laughs) Right. I mean, I don't think, I don't think that we can do that here. I think we can say we need to suspend, you know, you could have like, you could have situations where it's like, you, you know, you fly into the airport and you're going to have to do a, a mandatory, you know, some type of mandatory uh, quarantine. I, I don't even know if, I don't know if we could do that in this country, but I do think that we could have a, a government that is making the, you know, at least taking the idea of economic stress off the table by, by providing support. Now, if the Democrats had had their, you know, three point five million a billion a trillion dollar um, Heroes Act, would that help? Without a doubt, was it was uh, fully sufficient. Probably not, but it's certainly three point five trillion dollars better than what the Republicans wanted to do. I'm still not convinced that the one point eight trillion dollars that supposedly the Trump uh, administration was offering, we don't really know what was in it. It's very possible it could have been nothing, but the reason why you accept it is because it could be something. And if it's not, if it's nothing, then you have some political um, value to, you know, saying, hey, they, they're, they're screwing us over. So I don't know. Uh, all of that was, was in play. But let's move to, to uh, the dessert, ladies and gentlemen. And that is, of course, Dave Rubin. Um, 